Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you my final verdict on the Zeiss Battis 40mm f2 lens. Now, as perhaps many of you know, but maybe a few don't, the Battis series is a line of autofocusing Zeiss lenses made solely for Sony FE. And so unfortunately, if you shoot some other system outside of Sony, you're out of luck when it comes to these autofocusing Zeiss lenses because this is as, as good as it gets at the moment. I look at the Bata series as perhaps being the most practical lineup that Zeiss makes. Um, the very fact that they are autofocus and function pretty much like any other lens does in terms of autofocus, but with a lot of the you know intangibles of Zeiss quality in terms of optical performance and even just you know quality of design. And so all of those are a factor in the Bata series. The Bata 40 millimeter f2 occupies a maybe unique position in the Battis lineup. If I'm not mistaken, this is the fifth release in the Battis series. And this is the one that in a, uh, maybe a slightly quirky way helps to fill the void um, in this series that is occupied in other series by lenses like uh, Zeiss's macro planar lenses. In this case, this is not a true one to two um, reproduction ratio, which the macro planars are. Neither is it a 50 millimeter, which is what we have seen. We've seen 50 and 100 millimeter uh, lenses in that, uh, that lineup previously. This is a 40 millimeter, and it's not really a one to two magnification. In fact, it is a one to 3.3 or a 0 0.30 times magnification. The closest comparison that I'm actually aware of is uh, by Tamron, which is Tamron's 45 millimeter f1.8 VC lens. And it too has a slightly quirky focal length, you know, traditionally, but also that ability to, you know, to serve as a, you know, a pseudo macro, near macro, for those that don't require a true, you know, getting down into the nitty gritty details. But I would say serves the purpose of a macro lens in the way that a lot of people utilize a macro lens, which is close focus, but not quite, you know, down to a one-to-one -one reproduction ratio. And so if that's what you're looking for, this is going to be a seriously appealing lens. If you haven't already, I recommend that you take a look at my first look episode where I break down the build, the design, the handling of this particular lens, uh, the actual you know physical design of this lens. It has a fairly substantial lens hood, and if you remove that, you can see that it's what I would call on the you know the smaller side of medium, and so it's a fairly squat lens. The dimensions, if you just look at the dimensions, you'd think of maybe it was a square lens. It is 91 millimeters around, and so that gives you a 67 millimeter front filter thread, and it is 90 three millimeters long or 3.58 inches in diameter to 3.66 inches in length and so you know you know relatively compact but also fairly substantial around in girth and however due to the materials and the design they've really prioritized keeping these lenses light and so it is only 361 grams or 12.73 ounces and so obviously a really easy balance on all of the, um, you know, the, the Sony mirrorless bodies that you would use it on. I've yet to determine exactly what kind of materials are used in the barrel. Um, it feels a little bit like a lightweight um, metal alloy. Uh, there could be some engineered plastics in there, but the lens hood is definitely plastic and it has a very different feel than the lens barrel in terms of materials. And so I'm not 100% sure, but what I have seen so far is that so far the lenses seem to be very sturdy. Um, I've had good success with the finish on them. Never seen, I think I've tested four of the five so far and I haven't seen any issues with you know paint coming off or anything. Um, it does have a rubberized manual focus ring and uh, the one, if there's a downside to these rubberized focus rings, it is the fact that they do like lint a little bit. And so um, if you're really, really kind of picky about the look of your lenses, that may bug you sometimes and that there may be some lint that accumulates on there. Uh, beyond that, however, everything, everything works well. All of these Battis lenses have the OLED um, on the lens barrel that serves, you know, kind of as a replacement for a distance window. And um, you can actually go into the menu uh, and you can um, program it to do a few different things and or to display a little bit of different information, tweak the behavior a little bit um, on that. As noted, the lens can focus down very close. It can focus down to 9.45 inches or 24 centimeters, and that's where you get that 0.30 times magnification. 
And um, I will note about that uh, one kind of, of quirk that does pop up. Now, first of all, macro lenses, they do, all macro lenses, there are, there's physics involved when you get to, you know, very close focus distances to where they, um, you know, there's an effective aperture that changes, even though your physical aperture may be, say, f2.8, the lens will behave because of the way that the lens focuses, the way that light hits the sensors, it will behave at a much smaller effective aperture, like f5.6, for example. And that's part of the nature of the beast. What's unique here, however, is that um, with this lens, and it must have some kind of floating elements that causes this, but even at moderately close focus distances, so let's say, you know, three or four feet away, even if you're at f2, for example, and, you know, the camera registers f2, you can actually start to see the, uh, the blades a little bit. And I found that at, at about that distance, say three or four feet, that the uh, lens is letting in um, equal light to being stopped down just like a third of a stop, a third to a half stop in that range. And so, um, but the byproduct of that is that you can actually start to see the aperture blades fairly quickly. The downside of that is that if you're really, really big on having, say, if you're, you know, shooting something up close and um, you have like very bright, say, like Christmas light type lights in the background, um, what you will see is that they won't be completely circular. You will see a little bit of a nonagonal shape um, from the nine aperture blades that are part of that, even if you're not right on top of your subject. And you have to be at least six or seven feet away before it the aperture is fully opened and you are getting no aperture blade showing. So a little bit of a quirk that some people have wondered about, you know, saying that the aperture is not, you know, a round aperture. Well, the actual aperture opening is round as it is on basically all lenses. But what you're seeing is that due to the nature of that design, it's actually closing down a little bit. And so you're starting to see the aperture blade. So if you're, you know, a lot of like those bright light type shots, that may bug you a little bit. It may not bug you at all, but I just want to put that out there. Beyond that, however, I will note just while I'm on this that the bokeh quality is actually beautiful from the lens um, in you know basically every other type circumstance, and so it, it is a it's it has a really really pleasing, very artistic bokeh rendering. But there is that quirk, and so that may or may not bug you. Now the Battis uh, 40 millimeter f2 is a weather seal lens, and so it has a gasket here at the lens mount, but it also has internal seals, and and so um, that does help to allow you to shoot it in a variety of situations. The only other thing here physically that I will note is that there is a focus limiter due to the, the close focus nature of that, and so you can use that to improve your focus speed even further. I frankly have not personally found a huge need for it because the lens actually focuses very quickly. And so, um, but of course, if you're, you're really wanting to do either you're, you're really wanting to do manual focus or not manual focus, but very close focus type work, you might want to use it. Or if you're not going into that range at all, or you're finding you're maybe in a lower contrast situation, if you're missing sometimes and it's doing a focus rack, you might want to click that to just take that whole extra close focus realm out of the equation. And so in this case, you would only focus down as close as 0.4 meters to infinity if you were doing that. And so it would eliminate a lot of the close focus possibilities and speed that process up. So just something to consider on that note. Now, in terms of the autofocus, let's stop there for a moment and, and comment on that. Uh, a couple of things that I do want to highlight. Um, autofocus works really well with this lens. IAF works well. Autofocus is quick. Um, no, and it's actually uh, really very, very quiet. Um, you basically just hear focus lock. Um, You see, I've moved to a variety of focus distances while that, and all you heard basically was the beep that was a signaling focus lock. So very quiet under that circumstance. It also is, is quiet when you're doing AFC. Um, under video, if you're doing video uh, continual AF, it, it is very nice and quiet. Focus pools, as you can see here, as I move from subject to subject, they are, they're happening you know, quickly, confidently, no pulsing, no settling. Um, just going to it, nailing it, and so really great behavior there and very low amounts of noise being produced under that circumstance. So a lot of good stuff when it comes to the autofocus ability of the lens. I will note because it's focused by wire, I tried 
putting the focus shifter on there that I use like when I'm using Loxia uh, lenses or other manual focus type lenses to help with you know just doing quick focus pulls and it, it's it's a useful tool but in this case focus by wire it doesn't behave in a repeatable fashion and so if you move at a slightly different speed for example even if you go to the exact same point as before you don't always achieve the same focus point. And so if you're going to do a lot of, of manual focus for video work, I would recommend that you look at the Loxia series instead. Um, it's just much more precise for that kind of work. But of course, if you want autofocus, the Loxia series is worthless. So um, just note that that focus by wire, particularly for video work, precision video work, it's not great. It just really isn't. And so um, anyway, just something to note. The focus ring itself, Zeiss does a good job like for you know for regular work so if I switch into uh, manual focus here um, the actual focus feel for stills is is quite good they've managed to give the ring some substance proper damping to where it actually feels like you're doing something even though all you're doing is creating an electronic signal that goes through the focus motor so anyway they've done a good job with the feel but for video work it's a different story there now, if you look at this second episode, in this episode, we actually took a look at the image quality. And uh, obviously, this is a, a pretty expensive lens, $1,299, and um, you know, not a particularly large maximum aperture um, at f2. And so it really needs to deliver. And fortunately, it does. Actually, all of the Battis series has delivered you know, exceptional optical quality. Um, and so at, at wide open f2, it is basically sharp across the the whole frame and if you stop down to f2.8 contrast takes a hit upward and you have nearly basically perfect image quality across the frame from f2.8 on and so it's extremely sharp um, it has very very low chromatic aberrations and so the upside for that this is a great lens if you're someone who does product or food photography something where you need a little bit wider framing uh, sometimes you know macro lenses in the 90 to 100 millimeter range they're they're field of view is a little too narrow for that kind of thing and so um, this is actually a great focal length for that and so if you um, if, if you're wanting to do that kind of work having very very low longitudinal chromatic aberrations is a huge deal and so they've done a really good job controlling that uh, flare resistance is fairly good no real issue there color rendering is good I will note that I found that the baddest color rendering is is very very good better than average the Loxia series is better yet. And so it's a little bit more maybe like the Milvis series in terms of the, the color rendering than the Battis series. And so um, Loxia color is, is really fantastic. And when I'm shooting them side by side, it's not like you can really hardly point to a difference. There's just a little bit different feel. But I mean, Battis color is very good. And the 40 millimeter, as you can see from some of these landscape shots, it does a beautiful job for that. It's also a beautiful portrait lens. I've already noted it has very, very um, good bokeh. It also um, has you know, fairly good flare resistance. It has low chromatic aberration. Um, and it's a great focal length for you know, including a little bit more of the body, maybe an environmental um, portrait. And so I'm um, great for that. It would also be a great tool for uh, wedding photographers because of the close focus ability. And so you could go from, you know, it's a great field of view for just kind of capturing normal stuff. You know, this really is, you know, within the range of what a normal lens is. And so it has a very relatable um, angle of view when you're looking at photos from it. But the ability to also get close and shoot details on decorations or rings or bouquets or shoes, all of those things is certainly a plus. And so um, I, I think it's, it's also a, you know, a, a good lens to consider on that front. And so in conclusion, uh, the Battis uh, 40 millimeter F2, there's, there's very little to complain about. I think the only thing that I could do as a takeaway to complain about would be the, you know, the nature of those aperture blades showing a little bit, even at relatively um, not super close distances. And so that does bug me a little bit because I prefer to see nice round bokeh circles there. And so it does, I don't want to see those aperture blades. So, uh, you know, Zeiss could have solved this problem by creating an aperture with a little bit more rounded aperture blades that retains a better circular shape. So you wouldn't even know, people wouldn't even know that this happens if it weren't for the aperture circular shape changing a little bit. And so if I could give them one request, it would be to address that 
And, uh, and then I think that people would not be complaining about the shape of the aperture uh, because of that. And so that, that is one quirk that I will address. But beyond that, I mean, it's, it's a great lens. I mean, I've used it f for filming a few of my video episodes. And one thing that I, I really like about it, I find that with some lenses, they won't just settle. If it's a you know, kind of a static subject like me looking at the camera, there's a little bit of pulsing. You know, it's like it can't just recognize that focus is pretty static and all it needs to do is just stay there. The Battis 40 millimeter does a really good job with that. And so, I mean, I didn't notice any kind of going out of focus or twitchiness in filming episodes with it. And so it's, it's a great tool if that's something that you like to do as well. So a lot of good stuff, a very versatile kind of lens. And at the end of the day, yeah, that's an expensive price. $1,299 means that you're getting, you know, relatively close to say the cost of the Sony Zeiss Planar 50 millimeter F1.4, which is a fantastic lens as well. Well, you know, you're more expensive than the, the Sigma 50 millimeter F1.4 art, although you have a much, you know, better balancing lens and behaving lens in the Battis lens. But uh, my point is, is that you have options there. And so you have to determine whether the unique abilities, close focus ability, and the focal length of the lens means more to you than a larger maximum aperture um, at that price point. But at the end of the day, I have very little complaints about the Battis. It's a useful lens, and I think a lot of people will really enjoy what they can do with it if they add it to their kit. I'm Dustin Abbott. If you look in the description down below, you can read my full written text review, which you know sometimes covers some different details that I don't remember to hit in my video segments. Um, you can also find linkage there to the image gallery if you want to see more of the photos. I've shown you a few in this, but there's a lot more that you can see. Beyond that, you can also uh, find linkage to follow me on social media, now on Instagram as well. Uh, you can find linkage there to sign up for my newsletter, become a patron, and help support this channel. Channel. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.